Uh, well, let, let's jump into a little bit of meat and potatoes. Uh, uh, Guy, can you briefly explain the options volatility indicator you created and how it helps traders? Yes. So um, the option, the OVI, the options volatility indicator, is uh, an indicator with whose raw materials are transaction data, including pricing uh, and volume and open interest and all the things that go into an options chain and all the things that come out of an options chain as well. And we utilize that. We run algorithms through it. We create algorithms. And from that, what we're looking to determine is the likely um, bias of position builders, of position building activity. Um, so obviously, there's an awful lot to sort through. Now, you're doing that on all stocks, um, and we create not only an indicator for each stock in the S&P 500, well, actually each stock uh, that's optionable, but also we create a market breadth type of indicator throughout all stocks uh, in the S&P 500 with this information. So the kind of numbers we're talking about in the database runs into tens of billions of rows of options data. Uh, and that's a lot of data and it's a lot of dirty data in there as well. So that's a lot. There's a very big haystack and you know, the, the needle we're looking for is pretty, pretty small. Um, but it's that's the information we're looking to what we're looking at uh, uh, running our algorithms through. And from that, we create an indicator that is remarkably simple to look at and it's patented as well. So the indicator is normalized from a minimum of minus one to a maximum of plus one. And basically when it's in positive territory for any length of time, then we are looking for it to correlate with a bullish looking stock. And when it's negative for any length of time, we're looking for it to correlate with a bearish looking stock. And within that, those parameters, there will be trading opportunities in certain times uh, with certain conditions, which we're also looking to isolate. Um, that is what the OVI is and does. And because of the way the algorithms work, we can then run filters and searches and quantitative studies through it as well. And with it, either for a quantitative fund kind of automated portfolio kind of thing, which is what we do for, for professional clients, um, or for discretionary type trading for our retail uh, audience as well. So this intellectual property just splits into those different directions very nicely. And, and the beautiful thing is that the retail side doesn't interfere with the institutional side nor vice versa. So we can run all of that at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive, but they don't interfere with each other. And these indicators, we can like pin them on the chart and stuff like that. So that that's be... right. So, so at the moment, yeah, there's only one place you can get them, and that's through us. Um, but we are in the process of discussing with, as, as you and I discussed this not long ago, didn't we? But, uh, but we are in the process of discussing where else we might allow the OVI um, to be viewed and, and seen. Because what happens is this. Once someone finds it, uses it, they never want to let it go. They literally, that's it, that they're, they're, they're going to use it forever pretty much. And so it's a real, but we're not big at the moment by any stretch. We are a little niche outfit. Um, and uh, obviously I'd like a few more people to be able to get visibility on it, but it's very, very cool. Um, we, what we do, well, I'll tell you, I, I know you have more questions for me, so I won't preempt the questions, but we, we simplify things dramatically because we take a view of the markets where we're looking at demand and supply, but we're looking at demand and supply of a certain type of investor, an investor who is willing to, to who is taking more risks and playing with more money than others, um, and also one who probably certainly by the algorithms we see is looking is in possession of superior information now if you think about it if you've got a million investors out there which are the ones you want to follow the ones that got good information or the ones who are just noise well we want to isolate the ones who have good information and see what they uh, are doing and we can do that um, and we know we can do that because when you automate it with robust uh, algorithms to let it go on its own we come out winning. And so from a quantitative point of view, we must be isolating something with 
that has information, that valuable information in it. Now, are you talking about 100%? No, of course you're not. But are you talking about a considerable edge? Absolutely. And that's why it works not just in the discretionary uh, world, but also in the, in the quantitative automated world. Well, if uh, Pierce or Stefan are watching from TradingView, we uh, we got to get you guys talking to Guy and see what the, if we can get make uh, this indicator available on, on TradingView. I did I did a webinar the other day, and they're going, "Can I get it on TradingView?" I go, "No," <laughs> but <laughs> not, that might change. <laughs> not, not, not yet. No, no, it was not. It was more like a not yet. But funnily enough, I know a man who might want to introduce it. So uh, yeah, that's a discussion to, to be had. Um, but also, you know, the other thing that people want um, in, in my universe is they are absolutely itching to have it based in a brokerage account. And so this is another thing that we want to think about is, is actually pivot to becoming a broker, because I think that um, no one's a broker here, are they? Is anyone a broker here? Yes. Well, that you're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yes, yeah. it's, it's a discussion to be had, though obviously it's US focused. But we think that there is, you know, if you could make things really convenient for people where they can see it and trade it right away, that's got to be a big advantage for people. Um, and so, you know, we're open to that kind of thing as well.